Hello, everyone. In the previous video, we have introduced the DPC problem where we want to utilize an explicit control policy in order to find the best possible control action sequence in order to minimize some cost function, which is normally some reference tracking cost in order to bring a reference and the output of the system as close to each other as possible. A standard way in order to optimize this problem, as we have also seen in the previous video on the duffing oscillator, is that due to the differentiable structure between reference and output, so that we can basically directly differentiate through the entire code using uh, backward um, algorithmic differentiation, is that we also use gradient descent style solvers on the parameters of this control policy. So that means that during an optimization iteration, W is the old W plus some alpha step size times the gradient with respect to W of the cost function, right? So that would be a simple gradient descent, which can be then extended to momentum terms, atom terms, or whatsoever. However, all of these techniques basically boil down to simplistic view of any of these gradient descent approaches, right? Gradient descent. So, what is the problem with gradient descent? Gradient descent, of course, requires an initial point. So, at the very initial iteration, so iteration loop zero, of trying to find the best possible control uh, method or the control policy in order to uh, manipulate a control circuit, we need to come up with an initial guess on W. And if this control policy is, for example, a black box artificial neural network, it might be very hard to provide an initial guess on W, which is decent and feasible in that sense, to start from there applying gradient descent solvers. Because if that initial choice might be bad and infeasible, gradient descent will just put us into a local optimum next by to this initial guess, and nobody can give you a guarantee that this uh, local optimum nearby to the initial guess is suitable in order to solve this optimization problem in the global sense. So that's why we need to again talk regarding global and local optima. And in order to make this more specific, to make this more uh, lively, uh, we will discuss that using a classical control engineering problem, and that is the pendulum problem. So, of course, we have already worked a lot with the pendulum uh, in terms of system identification, uh, but for now, for the differential predictive control, DPC, we now assume that we have knowledge about the uh, dynamics of the pendulum, and even if we first need to identify the pendulum dynamics using data, that is fine, because we already know different techniques how to do that. The new addition here is that I have just added a simple uh, control term, this U of T, which can be interpreted as something like a torque applied basically uh, to the pendulum joint. So if we have here our pendulum with some rod, and this is rotating, and this is our, so that's theta, that's theta dot, then this would be some torque which would be applied, okay? And or this relates to a torque, it's actually not an exact torque due to units, but it relates basically to a torque which we can apply to this pendulum. And the starting point of our investigation is that our initial um, starting state of the pendulum is zero, zero, which I refer to the downward facing position. So the pendulum is basically facing downward, and our task is now to find a control policy pi, which will swing up the pendulum. So from the downward facing position, we want to swing up. Okay, so that's basically the task, and that's why the reference is a constant reference at pi zero, and pi zero is exactly this position, right? So we basically want to find a control policy bringing the pendulum into the upright position. So that's the task and we do this with DPC. In order to do so, as a stage cost, um, we just perform a weighted 
um, MSE on the reference minus the output, and the weighting, as we will see later, will be in such a way that we will put an emphasis on the angular displacement while the angular speed, uh, the angular velocity, is not uh, penalized so much. So the focus is on the angular, absolute angular displacement and not on the um, angular speed. So that's why we ut utilize the weighting matrix W here, capital W as a weighting, in order to uh, yeah, just penalize the theta and theta dot um, control deviation in different ways. But it's basically just a standard MSE, as usual. Okay, so then uh, we just work out the very normal way. So we start with a pendulum ODE, assuming that we know uh, what is going on. And what we already see here is an A and N, which will be the control policy. Uh, and this control policy will be normalized, uh, again using the 10H activation function, which we will see later. And um, this normalized control action is scaled by T max, which is basically the maximum torque which we can apply, or related to the maximum torque which we can apply to get this pendulum upwards. Okay, so this T max is basically a scaling of the normalized control action coming out of this A and N. The inputs to the ANN are just brute forcely scaled um, with respect to 2 pi. It's more or less uh, brute force here in order to get the um, data which we feed into the input layer to the ANN control policy into a suitable range. Here we set the data of the pendulum, more or less just as an application example, set up the configuration parameters of the simulation, the um, control uh, reference, so the upper equilibrium point, and here comes the control policy. We take in total seven inputs, uh, which are reference, um, control error, output, and also a little feature engineering element, so the cosine of the absolute angle here. Uh, we have not a so big network, again, just output and input layer, 20 neurons in between, and as I said, the output layer is again a 10H activation function to consider a natural limitation of the actuation power. Then we set everything together in, as an ODE problem. Um, we have a prediction function, we have the loss function, um, as already discussed, so far so good. Here is basically the weighting term, so uh, in a, uh, yeah, a per step, basically, uh, weighting, where we can see that the angular velocity, which is this term, is uh, 100 times less weighted than the uh, angle displacement error. Okay. Then we define our DPC uh, optimization problem and we solve our optimization problem with starting with the ADEM solver, so with a gradient descent solver, right? So ADEM is gradient descent based. And we can see here that you know, the loss is going a little bit down, but if we look at the actual control system, so after doing the training, we can observe this behavior. And if we have a close look at this behavior, this is actually not what we are aimed for. The greenish line here, that's tether, and the uh, orange line is tether dot. And tether should be brought into the upper equilibrium point, so that's plus pi, so 3.14. And if you look on the y scale, that's below one in radians, right? So that's uh, the angle tether in radians. So that basically means that uh, after steady state, the pendulum might be like something like in this position. So it's not upright, but it's, you know, not hanging straight down, but it's basically in this position. And if we look at the control actions being applied, so that's a normalized control action, which is minus one and one uh, limited due to the 10H activation function, we can see that the control policy has basically learned to apply full torque for all the time from the initial time point until the last time point. And the control setup, the model setup which we have utilized here, is such that the torque applied is not enough, or the torque capabilities of that motor which is sitting here in this joint is not enough in order to brute forcely swing this pendulum up in one shot. But what we actually would need to do is we have to do like an oscillating behavior and then swing up once the kinetic energy of this pendulum is enough in order to do the swing up. 
obviously, the DPC control policy has not learned this behavior. But what it basically learned is a brute force greedy control action. It just learned that, okay, if I increase my uh, control force, my control torque all the time, then obviously I can minimize this MSE and that's like just not the global best optimum, but that's the local best optimum based on some arbitrary random initialization of this control policy pi, right? So, but that's obviously not optimal because we have not reached our goal. So that's a problem because this local optimum, which we have converged in, is not feasible for us. So what can we do? We need to try to find the global optimum of this highly nonlinear control problem. Why that's highly nonlinear? Because our uh, problem, so our ODE dynamics are nonlinear, the pendulum, and the control policy, an artificial neural network with nonlinear activation function, is also nonlinear. So nonlinear control policy, nonlinear control plant, in a closed loop basically means a highly nonlinear optimization problem. Okay, so what can we do? And one brute force way, uh, what we can do is basically we can uh, find a better starting policy, um, so basically another W starting point before we do gradient descent. And in this example, I do it with meta heuristics global optimization and specifically a particle swarm optimization, which is just an arbitrary choice. And the idea here is a little bit hacky. So what we do here is we incorporate an ODE solver callback. And this callback will terminate the simulation once our um, velocity as well as our absolute angle displacement is small enough, um, small enough away from the upper equilibrium point, right? So these are minimal displacements from this upper equilibrium point. And once we have reached that, we will terminate the simulation. And the idea behind is that by terminating the simulation that we can give the uh, meta heuristic optimization solver a good hint that once it's up there, it seems that there are no additional control costs because the swing up has been successfully uh, done. This maneuver with the callback here is not possible with DPC directly because uh, this callback is basically a big, big if condition, right? So if these conditions apply, terminate the simulation. And a big if condition in a control code or an algorithmic implementation of the DPC basically completely um, goes nuts with respect to algorithmic differentiation, especially in the backward mode. So if you utilize this callback, differentiable code is not applicable anymore. So that's a problem and that's why we use a black box solver which does not utilize gradient descent but just simple function calls. Okay, so therefore we define a new prediction and a new loss function which is based on this callback. Um, and then we utilize just another uh, optimization toolbox, Meta Heuristics JL, which has a couple of black box optimization uh, solvers uh, inside, not really important which to use. So the usage here of the particle swarm optimization here is also more or less arbitrary. You could use any other uh, Meta Heuristic optimization solver which is capable of global exploration, right? We also um, invest a little bit of computing time here, so we start the piece over 4,000 particles and we optimize for 400 seconds, so roughly seven minutes. And uh, thanks to the just in time compilation of Julia in these uh, seven minutes, we can actually test uh, 64,000, so that's quite a bit, 64,000 different control policies, right? Because every function call basically means that we test for another uh, parameter set W. So the rationale behind using this meta heuristic exploration search using particle swarm optimization is that we basically try to scan the parameter space, the problem space for initial uh, parameter sets which are much closer to the true global optimum than just a random initialization of this artificial neural network. So that's basically our, uh, our um, yeah, way uh, to get something which is better than just gradient descent as a starting point. 
With this um, global optimization and taking the best optimum so far from the PSO optimization, we can see that the result is now much better. So after roughly, let's say, five, six seconds, the um, theta angle is at pi, so at the upper equilibrium, and the speed of the um, pendulum is roughly zero, so that means that the swing up was successful. However, as we can see here, the optimization result uh, seems not yet perfect because we have here a significant overshoot and also this jiggling here seems not so healthy. And we can explain that pretty much by the meta heuristic principle behind because meta heuristics are normally very strong in exploring, but they have problems in finding the sweet spots of local optimization, which gradient descent is really good in. Uh, and so what we do in the following is basically we combine these in a hybrid solution technique. So we take this nice initial guess from the PSO metaheuristic optimization and plug it into our gradient descent solver and try to fine tune this control policy even further. And that's what we do here next. So we go back basically to our ADAM solver, so to gradient descent. And what we do here at this point is basically we just take the result from the previous PSO optimization as a starting point. So this here is the starting point um, definition of the optimization problem to the gradient descent ADAM optimizer. And with this, we converge a little bit. As you can see here, the numbers go down. So obviously this fine tuning is successful. And then if we uh, plot the control result after fine-tuning, we can see, yes, okay, nice, this overshoot uh, could be reduced and even the reaching of the steady state uh, could be um, achieved a little bit quicker after roughly five seconds and not six seconds anymore. So obviously this was a healthy and successful um, technique in order to realize this classical control engineering problem by combining a global exploration algorithm like particle swarm optimization, among many others, and a local optimization using gradient descent. And this combination from global optimization, global exploration, and local minimization using gradient descent solvers is a classical solution technique, a practical solution technique, if we have highly nonlinear problems. In the previous video on the Duffing Oscillator, we didn't need to do that, although the problem was technically also nonlinear, but obviously it was not as challenging as the swing up problem of the pendulum. So it always depends on the specific application, which optimization tool chain you need to apply. And here in the pendulum case, we need, really need to take out the big bazooka combining global optimization and local optimization, which obviously worked well at the end. With this, I'm ending already this little excursion into differential predictive control, which, as I said, is basically the transfer from the neural ordinary differential system identification to control. Uh, I hope I could give you a first insight in this interesting control techniques, and I thank you for watching, and see you soon.